Like half of them are here. Maybe maybe five groups is not too bad because it will be ten people. Yeah. In each group. Including our party. Yeah. We are including the parties also in the groups, I think. Yeah. 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 Shall we? Should we? I know. Please come on, let's have some nice stage. Go on stage and the proper thing. Okay. Good morning. This is the last day, aren't you happy? <laughs> we actually are. <laughs> no, 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 we'll be sad, but, but happy. You know what I mean. Um, so, since apparently, as we already said, we are in Switzerland, we really can't do, be late more than 10 minutes. Although, half of you is sleeping. 
<laughs> they were smarter than you. So um, let's say what we'll be, be doing uh, today, this morning, is trying to, let's say, share a little, making sense, share again, and looking uh, to the future. So this is more or less the journey we are going to do now. Uh, we have a presentation, we have some slides, it's not a presentation, it's just a wrap-up stuff. Wow, it's so cool, this thing, that there's someone doing everything for you. <laughs> okay, so I see if it works. So, where are we after five days? So there's an easy answer, which is this. And there's another one a little bit more, let's say, articulated. <laughs> um, that is like looking into what we have been doing, actually. So we would just like to have a very fast overview because we know we did a lot of stuff. You have been hearing and listening to amazing speakers and so many hot topics. This is where we were starting from, actually. And there, it seemed like one month ago, I don't know if you're feeling the same, but it seems like if. So we were trying in the very first place to set the stage for our idea of audience development. I don't know if you actually found it throughout the summer school. Did you? That kind of idea. We were tackling, do you remember, the idea that it was cultural, strategic, systemic, complex, content-rooted, and the role of design thinking into uh, tackling the challenge, how could really design thinking be helpful in tackling the challenge, why we were choosing it. Uh, so this was more, and then of course, uh, forget tech, just end up. Um, we have been also going through many sessions. We, will be docu we have been documenting most of them also graphically, thanks to the amazing job of these guys that you were seeing together that were actually... <laughs> I don't remember who had the idea of doing this, maybe Susanna, but was a kind of a genius because we, Susanna is Susanna idea. Thank you, Susanna. Uh, then we had quite interesting masterclasses, which were, I think, the time to really get into uh, the topics a little bit more in depth. So having the time to really look into them. And we have been talking about design thinking and see how it actually works and tried it out, the value of arts and impacts and how to measure them. And then we went through the um, how to uh, plan for a world city. So what does it mean actually to plan audience development for a world city? And then uh, how to listen to the audience. We just put one of the slides because it was such an intense session. I've been sad because I wasn't there, but there are like five uh, drawings or six just for my session, just to say uh, about the. And we also had, let's say, um, uh, incredible speakers that we were actually uh, inviting because we wanted them to make sense. So, what's the link between policies and practices and uh, different paradigms that are actually uh, underneath the backbone? also unaware for us, maybe we are not aware of it, but of what we actually do. The legal framework, uh, the political challenges, and uh, also, let's say, the stereotype challenges. So all what it is actually questioning uh, the topics we were uh, facing. So um, we were starting, you were starting, with a number of questions. I will just uh, browse them here but we would like to hear from you somehow feedbacks around that because this is uh, actually what you were bringing into the room and what we would like to know what you are taking home. So there were plenty of questions that we tried to uh, group somehow. You will be having everything of this, okay? So after you will fill in the evaluation form, <laughs> you will be automatically allowed to have access to all what we have been doing in this week. So all the presentations, all the papers, also for those speakers who were actually reading or not, not using uh, uh, PPT, you will have bibliography and references of any kind, not just the ones that we already put, that were more, let's say, widened, uh, uh, let's say, concerned 
the wall thing and the big thing, let's say, but also more um, focused one, more um, linked to how to concretely do evaluation, how to concretely do uh, design thinking or whatever. And also you will have your questions. So there were a number of questions that we actually uh, tried to cluster into big questions that were somehow uh, the, what to say, what was common and most frequently tackled by so, your questions. So yeah, so, so actually we just wanted to know, that this was my best attempt to group some kinds of questions together. Um, so, did anybody feel that they did get some answers to the question, how might we get our boss to take audience development seriously? That actually is the most common question phrased in different ways across the piece. So, who feels that they did manage to answer some of those questions? You have to put your hand up. I, don't know. I was going to make you stand up, right? But you could just put your hand up. So does, and did anybody feel that they found uh, any solutions to that? You know what's... I suppose you don't want me to pick on you, right? You don't have to say anything if you don't want to. Okay. So I, I, I was interested, actually, to th wondering whether we should have done some more stuff on um, driving change and get, building commitments um, and influencing people. Who, would anyone have found that useful as a, as a topic, as a... Yeah, actually. Okay, so just thinking about the next summer school, I think that might be a that might be quite a useful uh, area to focus on. We were talking about it and saying it might be useful. Uh, what about? Has, did anybody get any more insight on how might we attract a more culturally, socially, ethnically diverse audience? And I'm not othering by saying that. I mean, I'm talking about the variety that uh, to bring around a, a, a wide variety of audiences. Okay, so Dario, I'm just going to pick on you because uh, someone has to start, and I know your name. So, and actually, you know, you're a partner. Uh, you're actually part of the lead partner organisation. So, uh, just uh, would you? Is there a mic on its way to you? There is. Look, I'm just playing for time, and you're playing for time because I obviously would like to know what uh, what what did you find out? Here, back, back, reverse. <laughs> actually <laughs> should have think about it but both from a theoretical point of view like with uh, listening to Wayne yesterday was really inspiring in order to to think in a wider way to museum and cultural institution role and how they have to deal with diversity and variety so it was really inspiring and at the same time we worked in the uh, in the groups um, about audience development projects, we, we tried with our group to develop a project to attract um, such, uh, ethnic, ethnic minority and so on. It was really useful, especially um, the debate with the other groups, because they really helped. Uh, what we, we worked about the role of ambassadors, like community leaders, in designing together some some um, different, a lot of different things, the communication, even the program, and so on. And how it's important, it's not so easy, and it's not just picking some community leaders and say, okay, it's done, we can work together. Even choosing the community leaders is a really big deal, because not just a segment of, of target, it's really complex, as, uh, as Wayne told us yesterday. I mean, there are a lot of div diversity inside any group, so gender and, and age and so many others. So this was really useful. Think about it, it was really useful for me. Brilliant, um, I mean, I think, uh, I'm really sorry because I, I missed uh, Wayne's talk and I understand that it was very, very thought provoking. But I think, you know, I think on the first day, uh, there was, um, in, in some of the presentations, there were some issues around us and them and I think uh, it, that, was, that was slightly uncomfortable, I think, you know. So actually, I, I hope there was some useful uh, development of that conversation. Did anybody else have anything to, to comment on that? Patricia. 
Yes, I have loved uh, Miriam Scholl's presentation of Dresden Theatre because uh, she wa um, her ways of segment segmentation was about uh, finding the common things, uh, uh, respect of the difference, for example, people who were married and who are married, or people who love beers, or people who love football. So she tried every time to attract audiences considering the commonalities instead of the differences. Yeah. And I found it very inspiring. So this idea of, yes, we, we, it's we, uh, we all have differences between us in all sorts of ways. Uh, the with, not for idea that comes with co-design and stuff. Yeah, I, I, again, that sounds like a really amazing presentation. Anybody else? on this. I know who you are because I saw you put your hands up. Are you sure you wouldn't like to share the thing that, uh, how might we, any how might we solutions? Okay, I'll move on to the next question, but this time I'm going to remember more carefully. So, <laughs> so did anybody have some new insight about how might we learn to innovate and make experiments? Yes, excellent. <laughs> Richard, I think that'll be you then. You did put your hand up, so I'm assuming that you might want to share something with us. Just there, in the hat. You don't need to be. I'm not, so, you know. Um, so this concept of kind of design thinking isn't something I have come across before this week, uh, but it's, it's really interesting to me, and it's something I really want to take back to London with me and try at uh, a Grey Eye, the company I work for. Um, and I've kind of spent my career beating myself up for the mistakes, just kind of the mistakes I've made. But I think this concept of actually, it's encouraged to, to try things and make mistakes and learn from trying is something that I found really refreshing and useful um, and kind of involving uh, the community as, um, equals, um, which I think is something we do already, but it's really, it's really useful. Yeah, just that model of design thinking I, I found really useful and there's something I really want to want to try. Yeah, and, and I guess, uh, you know, shout out for Grey Eye as a company who I think is instinctively really plugged into its audiences, its users. Uh, it's a, a, you know, once labeled disability arts company, something else now. But, you know, I think what's interesting about that is there's more of a you do it instinctively, but there's a process there mm. by which you can do it perhaps quick, more quickly, yeah, more exactly. effic efficiently. And more yeah. sort of formally, I suppose. More yeah, formally, more, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. I'm liking that. Come on, you, bro you bold, brave people. This session is not going to work, right? Okay, let's go. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to share experience from Theatre Sao Luis, where we went uh, first morning. I really liked their experience experiment but it's not experiment anymore since they are doing it for quite a while and they call it relaxed theater and I really like that uh, um, way of doing it because um, um, they're adjusting to um, audiences um, some of audiences are disabled but some of them are just families with kids some of them have some you know uh, other expectations, so they adjust in a way that they uh, low down lights, they low down uh, sound, they allowed people to go out and uh, get back during the show. So it, everything is like more relaxed and more adjusted to everyday life. So I think it's really good. And uh, what they said that um, uh, artists don't mind. That is something uh, I really liked. So it's not like... Uh, you know, they, they don't allow uh, anybody touch their performance, but it's really like uh, a dialogue and meeting in a halfway, and I really appreciate yeah, it's it. fantastic. Yes. So there's quite a concrete idea around Very concrete, relaxed yes. performances. And uh, interestingly, I mean, I think um, sometimes uh, artists do mind, so it's also about the building commitment and interest and understanding with artists that's very important. And actually, weirdly, it was a conversation we were having at the Mercury the other day about relaxed performances, wasn't it? Because relaxed performances have become very associated with 
uh, families with autistic children or attention deficit. But actually, we, you were talking to some families, weren't you, about their general needs as part of our co-design process. And they all said, well, we love this idea of relaxed performances. Does that mean we can just come in and not worry if the kids are talk? You know, so this idea that actually things like that can be about universal access. So going that extra, making a new provision actually serves a very wide range of other, you know, again, it's, it's, it's us. And we all have those different needs. That's a really, yeah, really nice point. Um, anybody else on innovation and experimenting? Piotr? Uh, this is just a small comment. I would like uh, to thank you. Uh, and because uh, I must say, I'm a little bit fed up with this word innovation. We put it everywhere. Uh, and it's, it also like generates this kind of association that well, if we want to be innovative, we need to have really like br brilliant ideas, involve technology, and etc. And during your workshop, you actually made me think that well, maybe it can be uh, uh, approached differently. And that was when you presented uh, like your definition of what innovation is. So it it can be actually understood also as as doing the things. In like in a new way, so it's like being self-critical, and this critical thinking uh, brings you to just change your attitude towards things. So innovation doesn't need to really uh, involve like these huge changes, but very small critical aspects of what we do on the uh, everyday basis. And I actually start liking this word again. <laughs> right, we've reclaimed innovation. But actually what we, were, what we were talking about was, of course, that creativity and innovation are not the same things. And an, an innovative organisation is one that has all the processes and culture in place to experiment, to learn from what it does, not just to keep doing things in a new way, but to learn every time and to make radical change, but that that is part of the everyday that's the, it's a big switch in the way that we work, and I guess it links very much to our ideas about putting audiences at the centre. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, make bold changes to the way we work. There were lots of things about saying, you know, how are we going to do change? Did anybody feel that they, they t can take away some ideas about how to make a bold change? Marvellous. <laughs> One person. That's, that's it. Would you like to tell us? Oh, two, two people. Thank you. <laughs> tell us about a bold change. I, I don't know if what we are looking for, but um, it comes to my mind today, it's Friday for Future Day. So I hope and I feel a bit in the air a call to action. Uh, and during these days, and especially yesterday with the um, Wayne lecture, I was, um, I was thinking a lot about the language and the awareness that we have to exercise every time in every country in different ways because I have sp I've spoken with a lot of persons from different backgrounds and we realize that each country is a very different position, a very different um, moment, place of the process about it, about being aware of what's the role of cultural uh, professionals to read the world they have around and in especially connected with the audiences and with the uh, desire and the very high goal to open our cultural organization I think that we have to make bold changes to the way we talk to make bold changes to the way we think it's all connecting and I felt even because this cooperation context help you out to figure all your bias and all your stereotypes that you have in your mind, it, it's something that we should exercise every day in every setting with every colleague, with every uh, potential uh, sponsor, or and that's all. I think that's a brilliant observation because because this idea that language really does shape how we think about things. And that by being together and having to navigate what the language means in different places forces you to question some of those things. I think that's a really great observation. Um, let's do more international co cooperation, right? So that's a bit, but yeah, I think that the importance of language to formulate how you think and, and questioning your own language is great. It's a great thought. Um, anybody else? Ah, yes. There's two more people, I'm liking this. Bold changes. Uh, Penny, Julia, down here, yes. Um, I was particularly inspired by Sally at the First Sight Gallery in Colchester, partly because it, it connected up all the things that we were, had been talking about. So um, all the you know, new ways of working, seemed to she seemed to have embodied them in what she'd had to do at First Sight to change its, radically change its fortunes. 
but I was particularly um, struck by her, her approach to partnership. So not only um, partnership and relationships, so she was going out, talking to the community, asking them what their issues were, not to do with cultural art or, or um, heritage or anything, but just talking to people and, and asking for their ideas and then working out what her response could be. So partnerships within the community, but also that she had partnered across sectors. So she's funded by the National Health Service for one of the programmes that she does in the gallery. And it strikes me with all these questions about audience development and how you um, engage socially, economically, ethically, um, that um, somebody had talked about the burden on the cultural sector and that it was almost, in all these things we're, it is possibly being asked of too much um, beyond you know, the, the beautiful work that comes out of it and that, um, that we need to find ways of, of um, uh, authentically and with integrity working with other sectors to think about society. And so that partnership with the NHS seemed to be um, so a great share, way. So share the burden. Let's yes. share the burden together because actually we, yeah. we have a... But also um, that thing about working in partnership is very practical. You know, she's solved yeah. lots of problems. She's found money. She's uh, solving problems together. But also she, it's helping her to think about what she's actually doing in a different way, that the yeah. standing outside yourself and looking at it in a different way. And it way. makes her immediately of and for and with her place, so it becomes much more relevant and meaningful to the people who live and work in, in Colchester. Yeah. Um, nice, I like that. I, if you didn't see Sally's thing, I think, uh, like all the case studies, they, all the Mastercard can come this way. Can you bring the mic down? How, can we get the mic down here? Sorry, sorry. I'm playing for time, it's right. Uh, Julia. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, for me, I, I decided that for me, my big goal when I go back would be to like working on how I can get like the, the wall of my institution, of my office more transparent, more in contact with what's happening outside. And sometimes I'm so focused about having the greatest idea of the world to create uh, the wonderful uh, format to involve everybody, etc. that um, I, I, I forgot, I forget about to watch, uh, watch outside. So for example, like I, you remind like about the climate change and uh, Fridays for Future. I was here, I was thinking, why don't we host the, the children? Or why don't we prepare together the, the signage of, for, the, for Fridays for today? And they say, oh, we don't have enough time. I had this idea just two days before. It will be impossible. Oh, I have to check with the board of my institution, whatever. And then at the end, I just called a few people. I spoke with my colleague on the phone. And yesterday, we have like 10 children. Not so many, but it's a beginning. So 10 children in our main room, like working with us. And we were doing this like... Um, uh, copy workshop, copywriting workshop for young revolutionary, uh, and, and it was great, and we had a good time, and we didn't need to put on social media. We just enjoyed uh, the afternoon with them, and I didn't, of course, because I was here, but <laughs> it was great. And uh, so you, you, you did a small thing while you weren't even there. Yeah. <laughs> How good <laughs> <laughs> it's like an but, I, but actually, that, that is going to be one of my uh, learnings to take away, I, uh, is this idea that actually, rather than talking about all the things you can't do, mm. just do a small thing. Yeah. So this kind of just do it thing. And I heard that in quite a lot of different conversations. I was talking to somebody in the policy forum uh, yesterday, which is, uh, was a, an another session with this, this guy who's saying, well, the thing about uh, bringing design thinking into some organisations is, you know, it's a really long way to go. So he said, I just really c concentrated on doing lots of little things quickly just to just to show you that you could, you know, so they just do it, just do it kind yeah, of thing. It's really amazing. But very yeah. simple without any expectation. And the second thing that I noticed yesterday, actually I was a very after Wayne conversation and then the other keynote that I think that in this room, like at least with, between us, Maybe we don't have to be happy just about representation, the diversity. Maybe we, at least for that, okay, the simple things, the small things, but at least we can say that here between us, uh, like representation of diversity, yes, one woman, one man, one like uh, minority, like it's not enough anymore, at least this. Like we, in that case, we should really like yeah. be, you, yeah. we have a humility to say that 
We think we know a lot of things about diversity. Yeah. We don't. But representation is not enough anymore. No. But that, and, that, and it shouldn't stop you. You know, d d saying it's not enough is not a reason not to. Uh, you know, it's again, yeah, just yeah, take, yeah, a take action. Yeah, yeah, completely. Um, become more relevant. There is a degree of crossover between all of these things, indeed. Are you going to be more relevant, Niels? <laughs> How might we? How might you? Well, uh, good morning. Um, I, th I think from Lewis Bonnet's keynote Tuesday morning over Mercedes' keynote on Wednesday to the things we heard yesterday and to quite many of the conversations I've had, at least within this, these walls behind closed doors, there seems to be this notion that we understand that we have to become more relevant. We have to redefine purpose. We have to find out what it takes to become relevant to the people we would like to be relevant to. And I think that there is a... I will leave Lisbon with an emphasis on that particular question, I think. What does relevance mean, really? Um, am I the one deciding what relevance is, or is it somebody else? And if it is somebody else, am I having the right conversations? Am I even you know, addressing the right people? Do I know how to do it? Do I have the right partnerships? Do I, am I humble enough to, to try to allow somebody else to influence the design of what I do in order to become relevant to somebody? So there, I think there is a conversation hidden here about relevance that is really, really interesting. And that is about reframing or resetting or redefining the purpose of what we do. And that too is also an act of policy. That is a political act. That is a response to increasing populism to Boris Johnson in the UK, to Donald Trump, to all the, the people that actually want to instrumentalize and limit what culture could potentially be all about. Diversity, inclusion, multi-voicedness, whatever. So, so to me, I think that, that I have become <laughs> confused on a much higher level than I thought possible. Oh, excellent. T uh, advanced confusion. Yes. yes. Okay. I, I, that's about it, yeah. I was, I was going to ask you, just, just in the spirit that Julia set before us, did you have a, a thing you might actually do? You always think deeply. So what's the new thing you might do? Yeah, but, but I live in Sweden, I work in Denmark, I live in Sweden, and I'm a great fan of, of Greta Thunberg, and I think art institutions too need to engage, not just engage on her side, with her vocabulary, with her, but we need to engage because the fight for sustainability, the fight for a sustainable planet, is not just a matter of, of climate change, it's also a matter of political change. And I think what I, what I will do, what we will do, because we are having that conversation, is how can we make arts institutions less afraid <laughs> to engage in the burning political issues? So a bit of, a bit of political activism with, the, with, with a safe space for good. I like it. I'll hold you to that. Uh, um, oh, it's a bit of a kind of... OK, the, the mic is nearest Jose, and then I'm coming back over here. That's... Thank you. <clears throat> well, I'm going back to, uh, to the session with Sally, which was particularly inspiring, and I recommend everybody who weren't there to go there and, and watch it if, if it is recorded, which I think it is. Or if not, well, too tough. Anyway, come to, uh, come to Colchester and see the lovely Mercury at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Um, regarding the becoming more relevant, I, I was particularly inspired by her because I remember that she said something like the first months in office, in, in, the, in the theater office, obviously, in the gallery office, she was like, running away like a crazy woman asking everybody she ran into in the city, how can I help you with my creativity, right? That was particularly interesting, I think, right? Um, and I think that everything she does, everything they do in the, in the art gallery is rooted, deeply rooted in actual social things that are going on in the community, right? Uh, to, to such an extent that one would say after the session, one would say, oh, you don't run an art gallery, uh, an art gallery. <laughs> you run something else with a gallery attached somehow, right? Uh, but everything they do is really relevant because of that, because uh, they're really in a conscious effort to open the gallery to as much people as possible with as, as much diverse profile as possible. 
And that was really, really amazing. And also, uh, related to the first question that we didn't really comment, I think that one of the cues that she, one of the tips that she gave us is that you really need to make noise, but like a good noise. You have to organize a very cool party, right? And everybody, including your boss, including the politicians who are in charge and everything, will want to go there and take a photo with you, right? Uh, it's something about that. You know, it was something that was in my mind before, yeah. but she actually She's confirmed it. A natural showman, but... Um and I think she, uh, I, I don't know if this is true because I heard this second hand, but I think she said she's, she's not actually really from a visual arts background. She's from a theatre background. Did she say that yesterday? No, she, she's, she's an, an artist, artist herself. She's, she's a artist. painter, I think, right? And she did work but for Boris Johnson, a, by the way. She'd never run a gallery. Yeah. And she, yeah. Uh, okay, so I, I think she said that she, but she wasn't afraid of um, being judged by other gallery you know, sort of other people that run galleries, because she was just much more... The people she wanted to be judged by were the people in Colchester kind of idea, you know. Oh. But anyway, I'm liking that the action is make some noise, have a party. That's mm. always a good action, right? So I think yeah. that's br brilliant. Great. I would like just a second to point out, to just to be linked to that. Yes, of Because Sally, we fell in love with Sally when we met her in Colchester. And so we said, because you must be in our summer school. Because she was precisely the embodiment of what we were thinking about. And it was because she's not doing social work with a, a gallery aside. She's, the, she's doing that job through arts. She's a curator. And I guess she's a very good one because when I saw an exhibition there, I was astonished. There were a couple of them and they were so strong. So what, she, what was really impressive was not the social work she did, was the art-based social work she did through her curatorial approach. So this is really bringing the artist into the very heart of the stuff because this is not about entering a community, asking to anybody, what's your problem, what's your problem, what's your problem, how might I help, blah, 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 and, and doing for anger families, their restaurant or whatever. It's also about really understanding which are the underlying topics that are really relevant for the community and being a very good curator, finding the right artist that can really interpret personally with his own vision those problems and making them just explode in an artistic way, making meaning on that, which is metaphors, which is about bringing us outside of the problem. So we would need too many explanations without art. With art, we might do without because it's so strong what it makes you happy, what makes happening to people. So I think that in this sense, and also when, I guess in the dark sessions as well, and I also in Miriam Scholl, it's quite relevant that what is really, really strong, when, it, when it's happening something really strong, an artist is involved. So it's yeah. really about what also was Anna saying yesterday about, and, um, and uh, I don't know, maybe in other conversations we had about this is cultural. So we are making a change because we are doing culture, not because culture makes something yeah, happen. So, so, so it's not that you compromise either your artistic ambition or practice, nor that you compromise your social change agenda, but actually each thing, fee each thing makes the other better. That's the point, isn't it? That's really? the point. So really, because they, I think that the point was that they were really showing that this is not just possible, it's amazing. So in this sense, it really reinforced my idea, my, this idea for... So I just wanted to link to that because it was something that was like... There, but boom, explosion. Right, explosions. We're going to do some explosions as well. Right, <laughs> lovely. Okay. Um, well, I, I would pick up what, uh, with uh, what Neil said. And uh, for me, it was really important to find here uh, thought about um, re human rights. I was not quite expecting this as a subject that came so much into our conversations. And that is really something that interests me. Uh, and we are talking about relevance and the role of culture uh, in this um, uh, activism way. So yesterday, after Wayne, we had uh, this talk by Maria Vlasho. Uh, and, and she spoke about uh, difficult conversations in museums. And we are used to think of cultural institutions and uh, as safe places where you go in your leisure time. And uh, 
I thought, why uh, not? Uh, why? How can we um, not avoid these difficult conversations and use the museum as uh, um, agoras, as she uh, provoked us? So I think this is really uh, something that we have to do. Um, and that I was very much urged to do, to be aware, to be conscious, and uh, to um, uh, listen with humility to the other voices, and especially have the courage to put this up, because it won't be easy. <laughs> yeah. I, think that, I think that's right. So uh, alongside the spirit of just do it, just do what you can and learn from that is also... And don't be... You know, it might be difficult, isn't it? It's like we shouldn't pretend that it's all easy because I think, you know, there's this uh, advanced confusion as a way of, you know, kind of embrace it and see... and, and but, but take action on it. Don't be uh, frightened by it. Yes. Yeah, but, but one thing that Greta told us is it's just the, the action of one person yeah. is enough, so... Yeah, we all should do it, even if it's only one. Yeah. Shoshana. One of the things I kind of reinforced in my uh, beliefs uh, throughout the week is that uh, when we talk about diversity or inclusion or representation and we find that it, it doesn't fit exactly what we are aiming for, maybe we're doing it in a clumsy way, actually what we are talking about is about justice and uh, democracy and commitment and uh, and that's something that really makes us relevant because that if we really see it through justice honesty commitment and uh, democracy then you find the ways to get out of those clumsy ways of representing people or include people and you just find the right way. You really find the ways to listen to people because it's urgent. It's not only about us, it's about the world we want to live in and actually you're all fighting for justice. Um, and that's something from yesterday that really kind of struck me again. It's, uh, it's my crump in the stomach, you know always finding that maybe I'm not doing enough, but that's the reason I wake up in the morning and keep doing what I do, even if some days I can do it, some days I can't. Um, but that's what I take from this week. It's like an even stronger belief that this is our, our duty. As, as Mercedes said, there's no right without a duty in it, and that's our duty. Oh, some, some nourishment from this week. That's that's really, really nice to hear. Um, okay, uh, there is more opportunity to share your thoughts in a less public environment uh, any minute now. Shall we move on to... Thank you so much for sharing such wise words so early in the morning. You're amazing. Um, shall we just... So, so what, what are we going to do next? Yes? Uh, what are we going to do next? Ah, yes. That's right. We're going to... Here are some topics that we think we've been talking about over the last few days. So we're going to go and shut ourselves in a room and we're going to have uh, some conversations about some, but not all of these things. Because in the last blast, I am determined not to be defeated by Mentimeter. So you are now going to get out your devices, yes, it's again, and you're going to vote. Which topics would you like to talk about? So. Uh, Tiago, can we have Mensi meter up again? <laughs> Don't worry, it's all it's all self-explanatory. Uh, I think we go, we, we 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 think we think we're going to go with five. So um, yes, so you can do some tactical voting. We're going to choose five out of these eight. So you need to rank them. Which things do you think are the most pressing? urgent topics that we should be talking about in general, but especially in the next session. Oh, yes, sorry, being uncomfortable. A little bit of speed there this morning, sorry, being uncomfortable, being uncomfortable. A discussion about being uncomfortable, sorry. This one here should say, being uncomfortable. It's working? Submit. Uh, <laughs> One of you. 
So you have to put them in order, right? So, so ah, there we go. Now it's moving. Now it's moving. And this is the point at which you can do your tactical voting. You can hover, you can wait. But we could be here for some time. Trump would love it. This is the kind of this is the, this is the future. You can do. You can also you can you can build in some segmentation into it as well. So you can sit. You know. So if I'd have asked you, you know, to, to say first of all whether you are you are male or female or you know or other, uh, essentially you could then see how people were voting by gender. It's like very strange. Anyway, that aside, that's a kind of geeky uh, manifestation that only I'm interested in, obviously. Mm -hmm. The thing is, if, if we've got the five groups, are we going to tell people what the groups are, or do they get to choose? But then if you're really, if you've ended up with something you don't like... Rooms, we, we, what, do you know, what do you know what the rooms are? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. That's it. I think you're all done. Okay, so now I think that. You were given a number, a room number when you walked in. You took a, you randomly took a number. Yeah. Colour, sorry. Okay, so if you look at that colour, uh, Elidio, can you, can you tell us what the, um, where the rooms, what, what, what each colour means? Oh, they don't mean anything. So, blue. Okay, okay. Right, so the rooms are, can you tell us where the rooms are? What's the blue. biggest room we've got? I, I, I can tell you, so... Ah, Rita, which is, one, the bi which is the biggest room? The biggest one yeah. is this one, and here we'll say two groups. The people that have the, ye the yellow paper and the blue paper stays here. No, 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 hang on a second, hang on. I think we're going to check, because, because we just asked people to vote, right? So I think the best thing is, if... So if, if you want to talk about... I think this is because otherwise... Okay. You know, okay. So if you've got a choice now between... We're going to have five conversations. So we lose being uncomfortable. Oh. Oh. Let's go just for these two. Okay. Uh, no, you're going to vote with your feet. Um, uh, okay. So on. It's too complicated. Yeah, maybe you, you can... If you're in the design thinking group, think about this. Okay, so um, so if you if you would like, did someone just do that? 
Okay. If you, that's, that's the nature of the crowd. Um, if you want to talk about being uncomfortable, if you want to have a conversation about being uncomfortable, uh, in a moment, move to this side of the auditorium. Okay, so, so have I, could wait. I have a sponsor for being uncomfortable? Would anyone like to talk about, I don't know, that doesn't make any sense to me, but if it makes sense to some people, that's cool. Evo wants to talk about being uncomfortable. Can you, can you stand up, please, Evo, and come and stand here? Right. Okay, uh, who would like to talk about, if you would like to talk about sharing the power, uh, can you come on this side of the auditorium in a moment? Not yet. No. Uh, who would, is it, can I have a sponsor for sharing the power? Julia is the, okay, Julia is the sponsor for, can you come stand over here so everyone knows what we're doing? I think this makes sense. Right, uh, the next rooms, Rita, are they sort of the same size? So, uh, the room one and three, yes. Okay. The, the room two, it's the smallest one. Okay, so, so, so if you, Yeah, but it's okay. If you want to talk about addressing the needs of diverse audiences, go to room three. So, wait. Because I am not understanding. Don't worry, don't worry, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So We've if got I am room not three, understanding, yes? I think anyone is like a bit confused. I know, but I think that's a bad idea because we just gave people <laughs> the, the idea. So, so you so, are... So um, Niels is going to talk, is, is going to lead the people who would, he's not lead anybody, but he's going to just go to the room three yeah. with everybody who would like to talk about uh, addressing the needs of diverse audiences. Okay, don't, don't panic, I'm going to go through it again, it's okay. So you're... Diverse audiences is with Niels. Uh, room, did you say room two is the small one? The small one, yeah. Okay. Uh, room two, if you want to talk about how to listen to audiences, and Ilya will take you there. And the last room is room one. Yeah. Yes? Oh, look at this. There's a whole crowd of people wanting to take you over there. And Simona... We'll take you to room one if you want to talk about organisational change. So can I'm going to I do just... this again. Don't worry. Right. So I'm going to repeat it. Here we go. If you want to talk about organisational change, go to room one with Simona. Simona, stand up. Come out here. So, so follow Simona to room one if you want to talk about organisational change. If you want to talk to how to listen to audiences, go to room two with Elidio. If you want to talk about addressing the needs of diverse audiences, go to room three with Niels. If you want to talk about sharing the power, stay over this side with Julia. If you want to talk about being uncomfortable, uh, stay with Evo on this side of the auditorium. Got that? If you turn out to be in too big a group, make two groups. So split the, to split the subject, okay?